the Mercedes EQS. And a very important uh, vehicle for Mercedes under this new EQ brand, um, the first all electric car to come from um, Stuttgart. And, and, you know, I don't know. Um, there's some things to like, you know, um, when I first saw the, the, uh, the screen, you know, the hyper screen and, you know, there's certain things that obviously, you know, smacked me in the face quite literally because I didn't understand why you would want something like that. And again, as you pointed out in the last podcast that we recorded, uh, you can opt to have that or not to have that. Um, I think in the interior, you know, it's actually from a luxury technology kind of, you know, communicating that forward looking futuristic, um, look, um, in that interior there it's, they've, they've achieved that, you know, without question. Um, now if you look at the exterior to me, I like the show car when I saw it, you know, two tone paint and all, but this to me, I know where, you know, where it comes from. I understand that they're trying to communicate, um, you know, the aerodynamic efficiency. And certainly this is very aerodynamic. This is a, a point to OCD, um, you know, drag coefficient. It's, it's extremely slippery, um, which is very necess- necessary for electric vehicles. But at the same time, it just kind of, uh, there's nothing that speaks high end luxury car to me at all. Um, you know, it's, just a little, I mean, you know, I, I want to call it a jelly bean. It's kind of like, it's just it's, this. It's, eh. such a, it's such a challenge, isn't it, though? It's such a challenge because, um, you know, all that you say stands. Uh, but to some degree, this sort of the signifier of this luxury car or whatever, often it's wedded to a sort of traditional idiom of, of something. And, and this clearly is trying not to be that. And fundamentally is not that. You know, it's their first all-electric platform at this scale. Um, and it's a, you know, technologically an exceedingly impressive thing. And, and it, it, it sits in parallel, if you like, in the, in the range to the S class as the S diminishes in its stature and its sales and it's significant. This will come up. So it's a really, as you say, super important car for them. But, um, it, I guess fundamentally there's a sort of jury still out on, on how Mercedes in particular as a brand, but I guess all car companies can manage to deliver sort of premium signifier, luxury signifier that statement um and actually as a consequence of course command very high price points um when actually the the design itself may actually sort of speak of of not being that type of car so i think it's a real challenge um a lot of the heavy lifting they're doing here with color as you say is this color break i mean that's a traditional sort of coach built car signifier back from you know god knows when um and uh, they brought it in in the show car. They've also got a lot of interesting things happening with the graphics and the lighting and so forth. So with the details, with the illumination and with a, with a sort of bicolor, they are bringing in a level of sort of punch. Um, and maybe they're trying to bring in also um, some level of sort of premium or luxury standing, which would perhaps be less evident otherwise. Um, mm. But I mean, it's, it's just how would you square the circle with this as a design team? It's, it's incredibly hard. And I think they've done broadly a good job. And of course, design in the interior is coming up in as much as in terms of the total design deliverable here. Well, maybe the exterior has less of a statement in terms of its form. It has to be aerodynamic. It has to adopt these proportions for different reasons as well. Um, but actually step inside. And other than the fact you've got the hyper screen, which in its own right is a huge story, you've got an alternative, which I think is interesting. It's the first time we've really seen a brand do something quite so markedly different in terms of going, you can have this or you can have that in two very different orientations of interior. So that that's really interesting. But then also, you know, all facets of the interior, there's a lot there. There's a lot of richness. Um, there's a lot of obviously features and functions, but actually in terms of design content, I think there's so much the design story about this product is, is on the inside. Um, ultimately, how, how it will run in the marketplace in terms of being, you know, the, the wealthy individual's statement of, of having arrived, of, of being successful, and, and how much the exterior actually does the lifting that it needs to do in that, only time will tell. Um, but it's certainly, I think, very hard to see, if you like, how else they might have approached this. And, and I think they've done a, a broadly good job, even if we can always be critical of some facet. I think you, what we've got there is a very impressive product. And of course, like the Audi that we talked about, this is, in a way, the first time we're seeing this dedicated to all electric. No messing around with ICE powertrains or, or rather package package derived products the this is dedicated uh, and yet it's not a tall vehicle and it is from a massive brand so it's it's properly significant how this how this one works out in the marketplace will be a really important um teller as to how 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 well ultimately its design is, is functioning 
Yes. No, I mean, look, I, I agree with you. Look, t- the technology is there. There's without question. Um, there are certain elements of that vehicle, I think, that are more tinsel than, you know, actual, you know, any anything significant from a design perspective. Um, but, you know, clearly it's great to give uh, customers the option, for example, to have little stars in the grill, um, you know, or in need in the <laughs> frontal area, um, you know, something that they can specify that they can personalize. And I think, you know, that definitely speaks to luxury. Um, of course the coach built, um, you know, two tone thing, as you mentioned, um, I, I hate the way that they split the cutterway, the, the colorway through into the wheel arch, but that's, let's not talk about that. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, I'm not a fan either, but Eric, let's face it, they're going to offer something, which is not just a bite. There, there's they're a few things. Making. I mean, you know, the wheel choice, for example, I mean, they look like, you know, wagon wheels off of a carriage, you know, the five spoke designs are a hell of a lot better, but yeah, the other ones. Um, so, and finally, I think the biggest issue i suppose that i have is i'm conditioned you're conditioned we've all seen what luxury products are right quote unquote luxury what a bentley is what a what a jaguar is what an s class is right and so when you look at those vehicles and you see that proportional shift i arguably i would say lucid nailed it they moved the y0 back they somehow made it luxury and this to me is still like this shape you know, um, optimized and efficient, um, though it is certainly, um, it just, it's, it's a hard one for me to grasp. Now, perhaps it's a generational thing. Perhaps I'm too old, right? Um, perhaps some young kid in China who's got like a hell of a lot of money is going to see this as a signifier of his wealth, as an elevation of his own personal stature to own one of these products from a visual perspective. Um, I don't see that. And it could be just me. I mean, look, everybody yeah, has a different. I, mean, um, I think. I think you know. You shouldn't run yourself down. You've got a point of of, of informed expertise here, um, unlike very very many people. Um, so yeah, perhaps you're expressing a personal view, but it's a pretty informed one. Um, and I suggest you're actually maybe quite representative of the type of person that might buy this product, even if you don't have the spare change on you right now. <laughs> um, but actually, yeah, you bring in Lucid. I mean, Lucid is a brand, of course. Uh, they've got this amazing thing, the air, as, as, you, as you've described, and I, I'm a fan also. Um, the design has to do the selling that. The design has to deliver because the Lucid brand kind of doesn't mean anything because it's box fresh. Right. On the other hand, Mercedes, they can just go in and go, hey, we're Mercedes, here it is. Uh, and it's not to say the design doesn't have a role there, but to your point, it is quite conceivable that the, that the design of this Mercedes-Benz EQS may not necessarily have to contribute to making it a success in the way that it does have to contribute to making the Lucid a success. Um, so, um, you know, I think your argument could have some weight to it. Very good point. Very good point indeed, Sam. Um, you know, brand value is incredibly important. Some people just buy it because of that. Um, and that may well be the case here. Now, China. Indeed.